Welcome back, everybody, to We Are TPM with myself, Kyle Teixeira. Sitting next to me is John Teixeira. And this week, we are going to discuss a unique investing opportunity uh, we have here with us in this, well, over Zoom today, uh, Vazul Heights, who is going to um, be discussing this unique opportunity. But before we get into that, if you guys have any questions about anything we discuss, want to uh, discuss this opportunity in specifically, uh, give us a call, 817 817- 818-9039. Shoot us an email at show me the money at wertpm.com. How you doing, Vazul? Thank you for coming on with us. I appreciate it. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm excited to ask questions, answer questions, and everything in between. Yeah, definitely. So let's let's uh, start with telling telling our listeners, viewers, uh, who you are. Yeah, so just very briefly about myself. So again, I'm Vazul. I'm a Hungarian uh, entrepreneur. Uh, when I was in college, I did a few different businesses from gelato delivery to hedge fund management to creating computer models to trade the stock market to automation. I've pretty much been in every little industry trying to see what I like, where there's a good product market fit. And recently, I was speaking to a friend of mine. We built a, well, we bought a bus, cleaned it out, converted it into a livable space. We put in a shower, you know, a whole kitchen, bedroom. And my friend has been living out of it for the last, well, a year and a half now. And I was asking him about, you know, do you get offers or how much do you think, do these things go for uh, on the market? And he's like, you know, every time I take this thing out and drive it, someone always asks me where I can get one, if I can build one for them. I'm like, okay, wh- why don't we do this? Why, why don't I, I join a few Facebook groups under his name. And I'm like, Hey, you know, my name is Sam. I'll, you know, here are a few photos of my, my, my bus. If you need help with your bus, give me a call. And the amount of responses we got was unbelievable. In 24 hours, we ended up signing a contract with with a gentleman in Texas. Um, and we're actually going to go down and build a few shipping containers. So that's kind of a little history of who I am, what I've been up to, um, and kind of what I'm working on now. So, yeah, there you go. So, so Kyle, if we could back up, I want to kind of kind of get into to where, where I met um, Vazul. He reached out to me. Because um, we're in the short term, we have so many short term rentals. He was coming out here to te- visiting Texas and ran across our listings and quickly realized that we had a whole bunch of listings and we were doing a great job managing um, these short term rentals that we talk about a lot on this podcast. And so that was what drew him to us. And then him and I had a conversation over the phone, and I was just really intrigued. So Vazul and, and his partner are just starting this, right, Vazul? I mean, you're kind of, kind of at the beginning stages of this, but you guys really intriguing. Yep, yeah, this, is, this is the dead creation, the very beginning of, of everything. We're just now building a website. We're just now getting a, a name together. And exactly like you said, you know, we're, we're heading down to Texas. We were looking for properties that we might want to live in while we're building there. Mm-hmm. And we came across your guys' listings, like crazy good reviews. And you guys had several listings. I said, you know what? Let me just reach out and see see who these guys are. Um, and, and thank God I did. Yeah, and next thing you know, you're on our podcast. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, crazy how fast things happen. And and I really appreciate the you know hospitality and, and the interest. It's It's been amazing. I wonder if we could get on Joe Rogan's podcast that way. If we just call him and say, hey... He no. loves going in different directions, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean it's it's extremely appealing and interesting to us, uh, you know, in a big part because we've talked about that before. You know, it's like one of those things everyone, especially being short-term rental operators, were like these tiny houses, these you know buses, like you said, that that people just throw up. I've seen things as far going as far as igloos that people rent out. Um, it's crazy how unique you can get because um, it draws interest, right? And it's it's a new avenue. Of, of not just investing in short-term rentals, but just just offering them and giving guest experiences. So, um, I, I think one thing you said that really interested me is this bus still drives, right? You said he drives yeah. this around, and yeah, and it's, it's still a functional functional space. Yep, and you know everything stays on the well. All right, you have to take it off the counters, but yeah, you know you yeah. got to keep it f- fairly tidy and whatnot. But I mean, it's you know seeing where the market is going and and you know potential recession or depression is, you know, people are really looking for unique stays, right? You know, mm-hmm. in the past five, six years, most Airbnbs have started looking the same where it's, you know, white wall and it's the same, you know, you have the TV and the coffee table and the couch set up and it all looks the same. 
And in a world where, you know, everyone wants something a little bit different or a little bit unique experience. Um, I mean, geez, the, the demand for this stuff has been, been going through the roof. So yeah. one, I'm sorry, Kyle, one of the things that intrigued me, Bazul, was, was you, you guys are just starting this. You're just starting shipping containers. You have somebody coming out here. You're coming out here in Texas and doing this for somebody. But I kind of tried to nail you down on pricing. And I know you probably don't want to do that today and put put out there, you know, how much these things cost because you're still figuring all that out. But I was intrigued with how much, how many beds you could get basically for the amount it would cost me to buy a normal house. Like if I bought a three bedroom, two bath house in my area, I'm probably averaging somewhere around 250 to 300,000. Okay. It sounds like I could buy your shipping containers fully furnished with a bedroom, a kitchen and a bathroom, right? In one of these shipping containers, I might be able to buy like eight of those for that price, right? Maybe even more. Am I, am I wrong there? You're actually 100% correct. So that math exactly tracks. So so what we've been seeing is if you take the same amount spent, right? So let's say 300,000, three bedroom, maybe four bed, you know, whatever, uh, two bath bath home, um, and instead spent that money on, on shipping containers, you could come in for, you know, you'd be able to do about eight of them. And the amount of rental income, you know, short-term, long-term vacation rental income that you would get is almost double. Yeah. You know, you know, Kyle, we have an example of this in Gulf Shores. Mm -hmm. When we were buying in Gulf Shores, we know very well what we can do for three bedrooms. What I'm always struck by is when I see the numbers of what people get for one bedroom condos on the beach. It's it's amazing the difference in price, but yet the difference in rental revenue isn't as great as the price. Yeah, we've seen that in pretty much all short term rental markets because there's really yeah, you know, there's a ceiling, but there's also a bottom. You know, you're going to pay a certain amount right. for a rental, no matter how many bedrooms it has. And then, you know, for it, it goes up too. If you have like a 12 bedroom, you're not going to get much more for that than like an eight mm -hmm. bedroom. You know, you're just, you just have an outrageous amount of bedrooms at that point for a huge group. Um, so the, the, the thing that we've, that I've noticed in, in how we operate and what we've always said to stay, in the top percentile of operators and and of our rentals is something you just stated is having something unique that brings the guest in um we've always said that's huge you know like you said all airbnbs look the same people stay at ours because they don't look the same as everybody else's they have they have names they have themes they they give the guest something else uh you know i, I think it's great what you're doing that this in itself is a unique experience um that you know people are striving for especially when you know, there's the new culture of, uh, you know, working from home and traveling the country and staying in Airbnbs. People love to stay in a shipping container, assuming mm. it has, you know, fast internet too, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's all so, doable. And like, you know, it's, it's exactly like you said, right? When you can provide some sort of value, whether it's uniqueness of the property or some other service above and beyond, mm -hmm. right? And, and I mean, clearly you guys are doing something right. The amount of reviews is, is absolutely insane. Is yeah, it's just a value trade. And like the more value you can provide or whether that's uniqueness or, you know, have a specific style, like, okay, this is going to be Viking central, right? And it's just, to, you know, you deck it out with the whole thing and, and just commit. Yeah. yeah, committing to it. Tell us more about what one of these, one of these shipping containers is going to look like. I know that they're customizable and they could have different themes and they could be whatever you want necessarily. But just, if I just said, Hey, you know what? I'll customize it. Just bring me a standard livable shipping container and dump it at this address. What, what is that going to look like? Yeah. So, so, you know, typically they come in 20 foot or 40 foot. Those are the typical standard uh, usually we do 20 foot just because 40 foot ends up being a lot longer than, than you think. Mm -hmm. And in a 20 foot, you can fit a kitchen, living room, bed, bathroom, right? You just get all that stuff and it's on its own and you can fit a queen bed in there usually. Um, uh, yeah, queen, queen bed. What's the square double. footage of that? Is that similar to like a hotel room you think? Uh, it's a little bit. I mean, I guess it depends on the hotel room, right? But like uh, it's, it's, I mean, square footage is probably bigger than this room, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we can just look it up. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's livable. Like, you know, 60 uh, square feet, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the types of requests we get, you can cover up the outside, right? Shipping containers are inherently like 
ugly, right? Uh, some people just want to paint it, like, you know, sand it, paint it, call it a day. Some of you can actually just attach, you know, siding to it, right? You put these beams or, you know, these, these wooden panels on the side and totally make it not look like a shipping container. We've done things or you can do things where, you know, you make it like an A-frame even and the shipping containers in the center and you can cut out and make like the flexibility is, is, is tremendous. Um, but you yeah, could, usually shipping containers like that. I'm just going to paint it and make it look like an oversized brick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've even seen things where you can like stick it on, you know, upright. So it's shooting straight out of the ground um, if, if, if you really wanted to. But, yeah. Nick stayed in some in Austin. If I remember right, they were stacked. So you, I know that you can stack these things on top of each other. You can you can put them side by side and, you know, create pass throughs. Right. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's really versatile that you can do with these things. Um, I think. I thought the ones that he stayed in were really neat. It, it offered the host a unique opportunity to have a large family stay in, like four of them or four individual families stay in, you know, in, in yeah. the single, single units. Yeah. And depending on layout, right, you could have individual containers that are just, you know, larger bedrooms with a connecting one that is like a shared bathroom or something, right? Like the, the, the flexibility is, is crazy, which is sometimes hard, right? When you're talking with people, what do you want? Jeez. <laughs> right, right. Like the sky is the limit. How right. can you nail it down? Mm -hmm. um, so that's something, I mean, you know, we're a new company, right? We're, we're, we're day by day getting a little better every day. Well, and, and you said, and I know you're new, so I want to ask this in a, in a specific way um, because, you know, I get, get your starting out, but tell us how you, either picture the how it either how it would be today or how you picture the process being as say someone who i have land i, I want to put one of these on it what would that process look like kind of step by step with you you know to yeah. get that from you know I, I assume there's like a you know talking numbers but a design process part and then a delivery you know how's that all work Great question. So I'll, I'll answer that kind of in two parts of like what that would look like for us. And then more importantly, what that would look like for, you know, like you said, someone buying or, you know, reaching out to us for our services. So for us, the next step, what we're, what we're looking to do is track everything, how long it takes to do each individual task when we break down um, the entire project. And basically what we're trying to figure out the, the short story is how long each individual thing takes, how much can we charge for each individual thing as it relates to the overall project so that when someone reaches out to us, we can give them one single flat rate. We're not charging for materials. We're not charging for, you know, it's time plus materials. It's just a flat rate for the entire project, right? We spec it out with you. We go over, okay, these are all the individual tasks, price breakdown um, like that. We set a date, we come out to you, we build it in three weeks, four weeks, depending on the size of, of, of project. And we leave and you have a completely finished shipping container or shipping containers um, that you can instantly start you know, putting on Airbnb or your own site, running out, et cetera. Um, for us, what that means is we need to track a lot of these metrics, right? So you know, in my automation and, and machine learning background is we need to track everything from the time it takes, you know, how many hours to you know, this actually took three times as long as we thought. Okay, we need to measure that because on our side, we need to understand how to fairly compensate the people that we work with and if we can incentivize them and put, you know, little bonuses for each task that gets completed, um, then we can basically get, you know, everyone pulling the machine in the, in the same direction. Right. So you and I talked about this a little bit. If I'm in, I don't know, if I'm in Utah and I call you and I'm like, hey, I want three of these things. I got a lot of land over here. I got I've got an acre of land and I, I want you to put three of these on here. Are you building those in where you are in California and then shipping them over? Or are you, are you coming here and, and building them here? Uh, we would probably go there and build them there. Um, after looking into zoning and all this stuff, because it differentiates between, you know, state or county by county even, um, is we would probably go build it there directly on it. Um, we thought about having our own warehouse here, which we have the space to do it. Um, the challenge is moving it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you move it, lots of things shift lots of things happen mm -hmm. um you know the walls that you just put up and look great and are white and are nice uh they start cracking cracks and yeah. you're going to be spending a lot of time right so it's like you spend 80 percent of the work at at the warehouse you ship it and then you have like 40 percent of the work right because right. you end up having to repair a lot of right. things yeah. so that's one of the things you know we're kind of massaging around trying to figure out what actually makes sense um the easiest thing would be to just ship it, but I don't know if it actually is. 
Can you ship a shipping container? No, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know, <laughs> once it's a house, it's so, retired, right? That's the that's kind of the point. All right, so so before we move on to the next part, I got I want to give people a little bit of a vision. Like, there are so many different things you can do with this. You can create a permanent foundation for this thing, right? And lock this thing down, and and depending on the zoning from where you're from, I mean, this could be considered a a permanent structure. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, tell us about like are you are you getting involved with uh, connecting the utilities to it? Um, maybe putting in the septic system if I need a septic system. I mean, how how in depth are you, is your company getting involved in setting this up? If I just want a turnkey system, are you able to do that? The short answer is yes. So with with uh, you know the people that we've been talking to over the phone, the guy that we're building for, even though he has some building experience, he's like, you know what? I don't have time to deal with this. I don't want to know about it. I, I, I don't have time to learn about all the things. I know kind of what I have in mind. Can you guys just figure it out? Let me know what that means, what I need to do on my end. And we basically start to finish, do everything. And he's going to be on the property so we can see all the progress and updates um, a, a, as we go along. You know, the guys that we work with, they've been building for 15 to 20 years, something like that. We've seen it all. The only difference now is that we're just applying it to mini homes and 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 you know bus conversions and things like that. Hmm. So this, this is a good point to ask you. I know, and I know this will probably become better and more efficient, or whatever you want to tell us here. But the, like, what's the timeline on on these things? I guess what's your what's your actual timeline? What is your you know f plan for a future timeline? How how's that look as far as the on the customer end? Yeah. So so timeline depending on how you know how well the customer has an idea of what they want less than a week to figure out the details figure out exactly what we're able to do you know my, my partner is an aerospace engineer so sometimes someone wants like windows around the whole thing it's like okay hang on let's, uh, let's take a step back let's see you know structurally how we can make this work <laughs> we go over that that typically takes a week and i say typically like we've been in business for a while right it typically takes a week and and then uh, as in terms of the building side so once we schedule a date to build Right now, it's going to take a month, and we're hoping to build two shipping containers. Okay, it's a stretch, but what that means for us is just you know, planning and preparation. Right, every day we have certain things that need to get crossed off. Each individual task we think takes a certain amount of time, certain amount of hours, effort. Uh, you know, we have to go to the hardware store back. All these things. So we just go day by day, planning out the entire month, and say, okay, this makes sense. We'll give a you know 10, 20 percent wiggle room in case things take longer and. Again, we'll be tracking everything along the way. So so the next time we do it, it'll be a lot more accurate. But about a month for two shipping containers. Okay. And I, and I mean, it'd probably get more efficient per container if you're doing them all in one location, I'd imagine. Um, yeah. And and at the end of this, right, we'll effectively have, you know, back when I was in, in high school, we, we were in the robotics team. We ended up, you know, placing top 4% of all, you know, uh, teams worldwide is we had this booklet where you could take a layman, someone that doesn't know, doesn't know anything about robotics, and flip through it and step by step go through exactly how we built this robot. And by the end, if they followed the steps and they could see the pieces that were clearly marked, they would have a robot at the end. I want to do the same thing for for this, where you can have this booklet step by step, make sure okay, yeah, we did this. Step two is this. Boom, let's go, and just as streamline as possible. Yeah. Mm, I love it. That is awesome. I love it. Where, where, where are you willing to do this, Fazul? Do you, are, you, are, what, what are your limitations? You must have a limitation. If, if somebody's listening out there, and they're in Massachusetts, if they're in Canada, if they're where, where, what's your limitation to where you will do this? So definitely, I would say our limitation is within the U.S. For now, uh, you have to be within the U.S. And even then, like. Uh, we'll see about Hawaii and 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 Alaska. Uh, it's not something we've we've totally contemplated yet. It begins, you know, brings a whole different different challenge for the tools that we have available to us, and and you know, shipping containers being over there. I have no idea. For now, as long as you're in, you know, outside of maybe Alaska, maybe Hawaii, we can pretty much get to you. All right, um, so continental forty eight states. You brought up a good point. The the the. Shipping containers are coming from California, but if I'm in a port city like Houston that might already have some, is it cheaper for me to buy my own 
or to have you go to Houston and and buy one there instead of instead of shipping it all the way across the country. That's what we would do. So depending on where you are, we would take a look at what's available in the closest market, just because typically that tends to be cheaper than you know transporting all this stuff back and forth, pain in the butt. Um, and so, yeah, we would typically take a look at the resources near you. And if there is something, great, we'll work that out with you. I mean, you know, we're totally transparent about all this. We're learning as we go. Um, but basically at the end of the day, you know, you're paying us for this outcome. We're going to do whatever it takes to get there. So, yeah. I got another crazy question for you. Can I can I present another one, Kyle? Go right ahead. You, you all right? That's why we're here, right? So so, I've got one in my backyard. This is hypothetical. I don't have one in my backyard, but I do. I have seen this before. I've got one in my backyard. I'm using it for storage, mm -hmm. and I've listened to you, or I've I've gotten this crazy idea to turn it into maybe an ADU in my backyard, right? Um, an ADU, by the way, is an additional dwelling unit. Sorry about the jargon. My bad. Um, I want to turn it into one of these units in my backyard. Are you willing to come out and do that? Yep. So prices would probably be uh, slightly different. You know, we, we're in the process of helping people that have like a half built situation and are just like, they, they've run out of time, right? They have a job, they have kids and they're like, okay, I just need this thing done. Can, can someone come out and deal with this? Yeah. We're, we're, we're flexible on that. No big deal. Um, we'd work with you to take a look at the, the zoning laws there and make sure everything's up to code. You need electrical out there, plumbing, you know, some of the, the people don't want plumbing like for, for bus conversions is instead they just want a, I forget the name of it, but it's a compostable toilet. Um, and so like, okay, yeah, that's totally fine. We go through all the options with you and, you know, here are the benefits, here are the cons, all this stuff. And yeah, the short answers, short answer is Yes. We, we, I mean, again, it's new. We think we can do it. We're going to do our, everything in our power to make it happen. Um, but I mean, it's 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 pretty straightforward on our side. Love okay. It. Well, uh, let me let me let me. I want to make this. I want to ask you a question that you've answered in parts, um, but just to make this beneficial for you and and real for our listeners. Um, and based on the example he gave earlier, I want to buy eight. Right. I'm gonna. Call, uh, how do I how do I do that? I want eight. I'm looking at property in Fort Worth. Um, you know, I'm about to submit an offer on it, but I want to make sure that, you know, zoning, all that stuff's good. So uh, this is tomorrow, the day this thing comes comes out, I hear, I hear our podcast, what do I do? So maybe the easiest thing you could reach out to, reach out to us, we would, we would take a look at the zoning laws for you. We would take a look at the documents um, and regulations. Uh, we would work with you to understand, okay, you know, is there water already on the property? What's the electrical situation? We would go through all these things. Uh, and then over the course of the week, we would plan out with you, not only just the look, feel, style, overall goals that you had in mind for this property, you know, wave your magic wand. What exactly would you love to see happen? You know, I, I, oh, I want eight that all do this. And each one's a different style, or maybe they're all like a Hawaiian theme, or mm. we'd work with you to figure all that out. Um, on our side, we'd go back and forth, uh, at first in just sketches of what each of these individual, uh, you know, containers would look like, and then we would probably put it into some 3D modeling software just so you could visually, you know, so you could see and, and turn it this way, that way and say, okay, yeah, this is exactly what I want. You know what we're building. We know what we're building for you. And then we'd set a date and we'd figure out, okay, it's going to cost this much. Quote you guys, probably bring down the price a little bit if you're buying eight, right? It makes our job easier, right? If we do insulation for one, might as well do insulation for eight. So it mm -hmm. makes our job a little bit easier. Um, and then we'd, we'd, we'd plan it out and work from there. So it's, it's yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Well, that may have, may or may not have been a real world, real, real question, but, um, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like there's a shipping container subdivision in my future. Yeah. Buzz it, it's, it's, it's doable. We have, we have lots of fun ideas. We can't do them all, but, uh, I'd see, I, yeah. the only, the only thing I'd say to that is a suggested step in there would be, uh, consult a, a great short-term rental operator um about what you're going to make on these shipping containers and where to put them but uh you know the rest yes, of that process well, sounds great you know what you that's a great point kyle i mean let's not gloss over that if you're thinking about doing this you should reach out to somebody who does the put to manages short-term rentals on a regular basis to give you an idea of what your revenue stream is going to be, whether it's a good good idea or not. Look, this is a unique opportunity in almost every market, even if it's oversaturated, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would try this 
even in an oversaturated market where there's too many Airbnbs because it's different. Mm -hmm. It's unique enough that even if you're in a market, you're like, hey, I'm here and my market's oversaturated and I don't want to add another Airbnb. Do this, man. You got some land. You got a quarter acre. You got half an acre over there. You want to put one or two of these on it and try it. And especially if you're out in the county and you're outside the city, like, like try it, right? It probably, uh, I'm, I'm doing some guessing here because we don't have the experience with it, but it would probably do really well. I've, I've seen and stayed in some of these little, they call them like communes almost, and in a few cities in Texas and other places where they kind of centrally, you know, they do something unique and name it, name it the whole little complex something, um, and it works. So, but I guess to your point, make sure you, in any market, at least evaluate that it's going to be beneficial to what you're spending. So, and you know, to your point, John, like talk about a great value add, right? If if mm -hmm. someone d hasn't done the research, they're just asking, and they kind of want us to do that. Like, that's a thing we've done in the past, right? Analyze the area, figure out what existing properties of that kind are doing. You know, we can see occupancy even just on Airbnb or just reaching out to them, and that sort of a thing could be an interesting value add in the future as well. And that's what we do for our clients too, Vazul. I mean, they come to us and they, they ask us about these opportunities and we, we, we give them that analysis. We do that analysis of whether we think, um, you know, I, I just said no again yesterday to somebody in a market. It was like, you know what? I, I hate saying no because I love doing this for people. But I got somebody that wants me to do a short-term rental somewhere. And, and I was like, no, I can't. This is not a good market for it. So it's not always a great idea. And having somebody that can do that analysis for you that's data-driven to show you why it's a good idea or not a good idea is really important whenever you're starting any business. And that's what these are. These are all little businesses. They're individual businesses, yeah. Yep. So, oh, and that's, uh, I think that's awesome that you guys do that. The fact that you're willing to say, you know what, we've looked, we've done our research. We know what's out there. I, even though this could be profitable for us, the best option might not be to move forward together. Right. And like that, th that's what it's about, right. Providing value in any way you see, in, in any way you can, um, or a good partnership here too. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But fortunately with what we do, we do long term and short term. So um, we're always looking at it from both those angles. And if and if we're not making enough, you know, out of the short term rental, we could still do a long term rental and, and you could still build wealth with real estate with a long term rental, right? That's how we've we've traditionally done it. So this whole short term game is still kind of a new game, right? I mean, we're still in the early stages of it, even though it feels like it feels like we've been doing it forever now. Well, and I think what you're what you're also pointing out is is, this, is what's great about this unique opportunity you're presenting here is it really extremely limits that oh this you know this this area is not good versus because right. usually we're considering what your cost of ownership is we've we've talked about that in the past uh, you know in a house is are we going to be able to do well enough on this short term rental to outpace your cost of ownership. Um, with the price points and the ability you're providing here with this opportunity, that's pretty much a yes in in all markets. Just because how unique it is, it's gonna people are gonna stay in it, and you know it's a lower cost of acquisition and the, compared and the, to really anything. So. And the cost, I mean, Vazul, I don't want to put you on the spot, and I know I know how difficult it is, but do you want to give a range of what these things would cost with, without any extra utilities? Do you even want to throw that out there? I mean, I can give a, a, a rough range, right? So, so this first project in Texas will really, really get a feel to see if you know we, we price this thing right, or you know, is the guy getting a really good deal, or are we right? right, um, right. The, the, I mean, it's such a low barrier to entry, right? Even, even if you stretch it, I, I would say not, not even on the high end, but like medium range of like forty k, let's say per container, is it such a low barrier to entry compared to spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a whole entire property and risking that amount? Instead, you bring the amount that you risk way lower and can still get some sort of comparable return that is actually end up being a little higher than than what you would dollar for dollar spending the higher amount. Um, I mean, again, it, it depends so much. 40000 for for a container or two, it, it really just depends. Yeah. You know, there's there's something that you probably haven't, haven't experienced as, as operators for years we've ran into this issue, especially with Airbnb being so new, is there's some places that don't have regulation yet or maybe change regulations and where you could 
you used to be able to operate a short-term rental. Now you can't because of some change or something the city council did. This you could just move this thing, you know. <laughs> like yeah, uh, your city you bans could. it, and you're like, okay, well, you yeah. know, I might might have to do a little bit of repairs, like you said earlier, but I'm not losing my whole investment. I'll just move it to this city that that still allows it. So it's you know, a, even if you bolt this yeah. thing down to a concrete foundation, you could still unbolt it and go right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like it, it, you know, the, at the end of the day, they're super mobile, right? You still own the land that still has value, and you still yeah. own the assets on on top, which can be moved. So exactly. And you know, I bring that up because it's a risk factor, right? And people, you know, minimizing those risk factors while maximizing the rewards is is all what building re- wealth and, and investing so is about. This is a really new thing and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. That also might be exactly what cut co- what keeps conventional lending from getting involved in this stuff. A lot like oh, yeah, they've had like a hard, hard time. To- with mobile homes. It's hard to because, get loans on mobile homes yep. be, or good yep. interest rates because, you know, you can just up and take that thing with you. So, yep. um, so they make you take the axles off of them and everything else <laughs> before they'll give you a, give you a loan for them. So, it's yeah, always, especially if you're a trucker, maybe they won't let you do that, right? You can just, you can just connect this thing and drive away. <laughs> Uh, but like you said, I mean, ideally, this is equivalent or less to what you'd spend these days on a down payment. So you're not really you're you're not even strapped to a lien or anything. You're you're pretty much buying these outright and and doing with it what you will. So. Yeah, and I mean, the market market for them, at least the ones that we've been building uh, since we're so new. Right. We've brought down our price uh, a bit to you know, see where the market is, test all these things out, make sure we know what the heck we're doing. These things are resellable too, right? If it comes to the day where it's like, you know what, I don't want to have anything to do with what I what I bought. The mark going rates for these things are really comparable, and you can get your money directly back out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty liquid. They're surprisingly liquid. Um, at least it has been has been for us. So you're doing yeah. some research and finding them on like Facebook Marketplace, and you're finding them out there. People are are reselling these things. And and they're doing it so quickly that that people that buy buy one of these from you shouldn't be as concerned about getting out of a bad decision if it didn't work out. Yeah, literally the worst worst case scenario is one, we might even buy it back from you. Two, you can go ahead and resell it. And some, I mean, depending on on uh, what the market is exactly, either recoup your entire investment or like eighty percent of it, mm-hmm. right? So your risk is just twenty percent of whatever you know whatever you'd pay. There, there's, you know, there's so many different ways where you can benefit worst case scenario, right? And you just touched on it a bit, but I was going to say, I'm, and I know you're new, but uh, I'd imagine in, into the future, uh, you'd be a great resource also for that liquidity. Like, you know, you guys yeah. are selling these to more people. You're like, well, you could be a resource to get it to a new buyer and kind of be that conduit. So not tag, not, not pegging you down to that being your service, but if, yeah. Well, it, it, it's a good point because on our selling. side to diversify, right? right? Like, yes, we're selling these to to individuals who are going to rent them out. But if we don't have business, we'll just build them for ourselves because we'll put it on our property mm-hmm. and rent it out. It's a win-win. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think this was a very fruitful conversation. I hope so. I yeah. hope this unique this little unique uh, opportunity and, and Vazul getting, you know, listen, y'all, if you're all thinking about doing something like this, there's probably people out there that have more experience than Vazul, but I can tell you, he is, um, he seems to be, he has, seems to have a lot of passion for what he does, seems to care about what he does. And I love getting in with somebody that you like on the ground floor, right? Like I instantly hit it off with Azul. I really liked him and I I want to I want to he's fired me up. I want to I want one of these things. <laughs> I want to find I want to find an opportunity to go buy one right now. Yeah, definitely. We're ho- uh, we you know, hopefully very soon we can do a uh, testimonial for this as well. So, looking forward to that conversation. Can as we well, take our possible. podcast on the road, Steve, when we open one of these <laughs> things up? Is it going to be too echoey in a in a shipping container? Stay there. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna stay with us. Steve wants to stay at the shipping container. All right, let's get a little more real, Vazul. How do you know? Again, how how do we contact you? How does somebody contact you if they wanna they wanna do this? So my you know the number that that we've been going at is two zero nine seven seven zero two one three four. Um, that's the direct line here. We'll we'll help you out directly. Um, of course. Uh, you know, if they reach out to to you guys, you know, I'm, we'll be in, in close contact too. Um, Definitely. But yeah, for now, we don't have a website. 
We're just now taking pictures. We're just now getting all this stuff together. You guys hit us right in the, you know, dead beginning. It's <laughs> it's just happening. So uh, as we get more information, you know, maybe we'll I'll, I'll be back on this podcast in the future. Who knows? Um, with some more detailed information, we'll see how the Texas trip goes. Um, but yeah, for now, you can reach out reach out via via phone or email. Love it. And if and uh, in, in, of course, reach out to us. We will be happy to connect you with Vazul. Um, what what do we call you? You got a company name yet that you guys are, are running this under? Or you... we have a few different few. Di- you know, maybe we should maybe we should run it by Chat GPT. See what a, <laughs> see what it has for us. That's right? a good idea. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we'll we'll you know starting this week we set up LLC, we set up an EIN, and get everything together. So we'll need a name. But, Let's yeah. do that right cool. now. Let's run it through Chat GPT right on the podcast <laughs> and see what they come up with. All right, let's see, let's see huh? <laughs> Look, he's doing it. He's gonna do it right now. I love it. I share my screen. Let's do it. No, you can just it's, tell us what we're it comes in. The, up we're with. in the trend of of, of you Chat just, DD, you, you GPT. Just, uh, now, now anyway. we're just having fun at the end of our podcast. Now, yeah, we'll see. Hey, you know, you know, you, you never know. Let's see. All right, so I'll just type out. Um, I have a bus. But, uh, all right. Which I have a bus conversion, shipping container conversion, and tiny home building company. I need business name ideas. I want it to be something that sends a message that we build things that are, I don't know, beautiful, strong, good quality. All right, give me 10 ideas for names. Try this. Wow, that was All a right. lot. I would have given it a lot less, huh? <laughs> oh. It's amazing what it does with less too. You know, somebody's listening to this podcast. Like, well, this is a whole other thing for them. Like, chat, G- chat, chat GPT. GPT yeah. What? We should probably explain that. <laughs> no, we won't. You know, Google it. You'll Google find that. out. That's that's a whole other. You know, how do you apply Chat GPT to your guys' business? Like that. That, well, that would be a whole. We other could have a whole really conversation topic. about that. <laughs> okay, so we got we got a few here. We got container craftsmen. We got Ooh. bus builders. Tiny home titans. Converted <laughs> creations. Mobile masterpieces uh quality quarters um built to last sturdy spaces uh wow. tiny transformation i'll those play are, around with it those, those are, are great amazing. ideas those ask are, it what's the best one those those are all <laughs> great ideas i like mobile masters i like i liked a few of those that was great yeah not not bad for a, a computer program here she's louise all right. Yeah. I'm glad we did that. Vazul, thank you for taking the time to spend some time with us to share this unique opportunity with anybody who might be listening to us. And um, we wish you well. We know we'll be doing some business in the future and, and trying to look for opportunities for both of us, right, to to help yeah. each other. Because your business and our business, um, they go hand in hand. And, and so um, I look forward to to seeing how you launch from here. Kyle, you want to close us out? Yes, thank you for coming on here. And this honestly was the first time we even talked. So it was great, great discussing this with you. Appreciate you coming on. Um, And if anybody wants to give us a call to discuss this, the number again is 817-818-9039. Always shoot us an email at showmethemoney at wertpm.com. And thanks for tuning in. Bye, y'all.